Hi friends, <clears throat> here we are Thursday. I thought to come on quickly, um, I'm cooking dinner, but I uh, wanted to share something with you, thought that came up, and while we're moving between the chakras, especially we were just in the heart chakra and the hata chakra, and then tomorrow, please God, we'll be moving to the throat chakra. Um, and so that's the place where we kind of connect the physical world. Um, the lower chakra is really being in this, this world, this element of earthliness and so forth, and then moving into the upper realms. Um, and I thought, let's really get into our bodies and solidify that because moving up isn't about becoming better than the body, right? What am I talking about? Um, so a topic came up this week in my yoga teacher training group about really yoga ethics and your right as a student to deny or, or to say no basically to having hands-on adjustments and really your responsibility as a yoga teacher to request permission before touching. Um, and that's something, I'm coming as a student and as a teacher, that's something that um, is, it can't be stressed enough. You know, as a teacher, I try to always, always, always remember, ask permission before I touch, um, to see, is, does the student want hands-on adjustments? And of course, there are certain areas of the body that I personally do not um, ever make hands-on adjustments, really um, not much above the knee, and not much um, below, the belly button in between that space, of course, in different positions, uh, in yoga asanas, whatever. It's, we can we can actually do a whole video of um, what are really best ways to, to do hands-on adjustments in different yoga positions um, that are that offer the most respect for your student. Um, anyway, it's so important to know also as a student that regardless of you physically being in yoga class, you're still in your body. And no one has the right to touch your body if you don't want them to, right? So I just want us to remember that because um, being in a yoga studio, there can often be this flow into like, what are the standards of yoga culture? Is there a kind of yoga culture that, that generally across the boards we all have to agree to? And um, I remember, you know, two things came up for me. Once, um, I was in a class actually in New York City and the teacher was really um, encouraging us really tried to make us all like just greet one another, shake hands, touch the person, hug the person next to you. And, and I kind of understood from her place she was doing that in a sense of like New York is, people think it's a closed off culture, everyone's isolated, you don't have much physical contact with others. Um, and while I could understand that that might have come from a good intention, it was given over as an instruction that had to be honored um, and that was something that I remember in that moment, I wasn't interested. I didn't want to touch the person next to me. I was coming from a space of, I want to be in this group practicing, but I'm on my own mat and I want to be in my body and I don't want to take on other people's energies. Um, you know, being an empath, um, coming from a codependent world, that was just, this was my space to really claim my private space in the public sphere. Um, so that was something that really stuck out. She was a loving, compassionate teacher. There wasn't like bad will, but I just thought, oh wow, this is, this is a note for me to notice um, when I teach as well. You know, this idea of forced community and what does it look like to be in a, a public sphere? You know, you can be friendly with the person next to you without needing to shake their hands or hug them or touch them, and that's perfectly okay. Um, and then there was another incident that's happened that was so many, honestly, it was almost 20 or less years ago when I was in a class and the teacher um, who, I mean, I heard horror stories from other people afterwards as well, um, was just really like in some kind of guru syndrome mode. And I remember I was in plank pose and he put his hands on my buttocks and um, totally was saying, like just telling me like this is the muscle I need to um, that I need to activate to be in this pose. I gotta get my glutes going, and then said out loud in the class to justify his actions how he loves being a yoga teacher because that gives him the right to touch people. Literally, I went into a freeze mode because that time my my response was in fight, flight, or freeze was like I didn't know how to being empowered to say, excuse me, you do not touch me in that sense, like, 
you just cross the boundaries and and then go clearly speak to management and let them know he totally um, overstepped boundaries and touched me inappropriately without my permission. I didn't know that at that time. Um, and I've heard stories like that from other people, so I know I'm not alone in that. And so that's a teaching for me as a student to remember wherever I am, whatever public sphere I'm in, I'm in the private sphere of my body, and you are as well. So you always have the right to say no. And as a teacher, as a yoga teacher, regardless of what we think the norms are, your students, they're in your classroom, but they're in their bodies. And so it is so crucial for us to remember to ask for permission. Some yoga styles more than others are really very hands-on. And if you're not that kind of hands-on person, you might not be drawn to that. Um, but you should be able to practice anywhere in the world, any style of yoga, and really feel that you're seen and respected in your own um, self-governance of your body, right? And um, that's something so important for us to remember as teachers and students of yoga, as people in the world, we can create a loving, compassionate environment and we don't need to touch. We should, as teachers, be so gifted that we can clearly communicate verbal cues if our student doesn't want a hands-on adjustment. Um, and then also the thing about really protecting your own energy. I know there are times as, as a teacher for myself, I don't want to touch anyone. Either I'm protecting my own energy because I feel there's something going on uh, in the classroom or I've come in a place that like maybe I'm a little irritated, maybe I'm not in that space, maybe I feel a cold coming on and I want to protect my students from my own germs. So there are other ways to cue and modify other than hands-on. It also, in a safe environment, hands-on adjustments can be an amazing experience. They can take you to a place that um, you can't really, as a yoga student, access on your own so easily, but that has to be on the basis of trust and, and being seen. And it touches on so many yoga concepts of, um, in the yamas, of astia, of truthfulness. So you, as a yoga student, what is your truthfulness in this moment? Do you want hands-on adjustments? Do you not? And can you use your voice to, to express that truth to your teacher? Are you in a space where you feel invited and welcomed to, to claim that? And if not, that's something to examine. Um, because just because you're in a yoga class doesn't mean you're giving over the rights of your own, your body, right? We know that. And also, it, it speaks about um, other concepts of brahmacharya, which is really um, seeing the divinity in the other and having a kind of sacredness in our interactions with others and so honoring that uh, our yoga students are their own beings as well. Their bodies aren't ours. And um, really asking for permission is so crucial and helps to develop a really healthy relationship between teacher and student, kind of reminding everyone of their place, the teacher not getting out of control with their power and authority, and the student not getting out of control with their vulnerability and receiving. That even in my yes, I can tell myself no, and even in my no, I can find my yes. So these are some ideas to explore as we move into the weekend. I'm gonna go back to my dinner. I wanted to share that with you. Does it speak to you? Have you had an experience that made you think differently about hands on touch? Um, let me know. Share this if it speaks to you and you know someone that will be positively affected. I hope that this opens a safe space for a good conversation. It's really important that we really bring this awareness into the yoga community. And um, have a wonderful weekend.